hosted by Adnan al-Sheikh, Mazen Kurush, Abdul Salam Umaylif, and Ahmed Rafiq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rabbi shahli sadri wa sirli amri wa hala laqtatum min nisani yafqahu qawli. You guys are live on another night of Albion Radio. Today is the sixth night of Ramadan and we are back and live with our podcast, The Muslim Mindset, back with myself, Adnan Al-Cheek. Ahmed Rafiq and Ma- joined and Mazen Karush. Assalamu alaikum. How you boys doing? Alhamdulillah. Yourself? Long time no see, yeah. speak here. It's been a minute. It's good uh-huh. to be back, right? It is, eh? It feels good to be here. The Ramadan. It, it, I think it started in Ramadan, eh? We've been doing this for quite a while that it doesn't feel like Ramadan unless we do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's what I mean? good, actually. Good habit. I know, it but is. At least we like stuck to that th- as well because I know everyone got busy during a... F- Ooh, what's going on here? Uh, at least everyone <laughs> got. I think everyone got busy during that period. But in Subhanallah, Ramadan's always the, it's always that that gel. I was yeah. thinking, I'm like, don't they have any new young guys that are willing to well, uh, <laughs> maybe get my younger for brother for to do like <laughs> for these podcasts, even yeah. in and outside of Ramadan? Do a Roblox I know when he started. Sta- or something. Yeah, but <laughs> I remember when he started in Ramadan. It was uh, we used to do like a rotation or something every week. You remember? There was bro, I think we were what like 19. Bro, don't even get me started, bro. My yeah. Someone asked me how old is your brother now? I'm like 19. I'm like, well, I was like yesterday, we were 19, bro. Yesterday we just finished school, we got our peas and we're going around, just started uni. Bro, I'm turning 26 at the end bro, of the year. Actually, you're not even 25 yet. <laughs> <laughs> you're not even 25 yet. Almost there. Yeah. <laughs> Almost there, yeah. Yeah, Allah. Mm. I actually remember, bro, subhanAllah, I went, I rocked up somewhere and then they had to, uh, I think it was like a shoe shop or something and they had to ask you for like your date of birth or whatever. They're like, oh, how old are you? Yeah. And I said 18 and I think I was like 20 or 21. <laughs> <laughs> it was when it clicked and my mum was next to me she's like you're 21 I was like oh <laughs> snap you, you know stop what? counting once you hit an age no you know what at 22 I remember I used to forget how old I was as well yeah, I used to I calculate like it. as well but now I remember but you know what I'm not fussed by getting older or anything like that I find a lot of people are like mm. the other day um, I always tie back to work but <laughs> no it's good <laughs> the other I was day, the same thing a lot the <laughs> other day at work so um, this lady was getting her eyes tested and she was struggling to read. She yeah. came in, she was struggling to read. And that's quite normal once you hit your 40s. If you've got no like glasses of, all, mm. of any sort, you start to struggle to read. I told her, you know, it's a normal age-related change. You have nothing to worry about. You don't have a disease or a deficiency. Mm. Like you're not coming up with an illness of some of anything. This is a normal way of life. And she broke down. She's like, I don't want to be old, this, <laughs> Sure. Even yeah, guy, even the men, bro. Yeah, yeah but I you know, once you tie it to something like that, though, it hits a bit more. Like you're saying, uh, you don't mind the aging, but once you start to lose the things Capacity. you had, that's when you're like, I don't think you're scared about age. You're just scared about what you're losing as the age is coming. Yeah, yeah. true. Look, look. I mean, I, I, I just think of it. It's, it's, it's inevitable. Yeah. It's gonna happen, and it's me progressing through my life. Inshallah, it's a good and valuable way of progressing. Yeah. And that's it. Like, there's nothing to be upset about. This is natural. Uh, and why I try to make myself think like that is because I feel like if you don't think like that, you're going to have a very strong attachment to this world and this yeah, dunya. Exactly Which, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I don't. Yeah, yeah. In my worldly possessions and other things. But if you just, oh, I, can't, I wish I was younger. Oh, I'm getting old. Oh, don't mm. ask me my age. I hate it when people say, don't ask me my age. Yeah, yeah. This, that. <laughs> I'm like, bro, relax. You're going to die. <laughs> okay, and no one's going to remember you. <laughs> That's pretty much it. The scary part is when yeah. you look back at it, like you don't want to be looking back and be like, where did m- where, what did I do with my life? Like mm. not using it in a wrong way or wasting time and stuff. That's the scary part. Yeah. You know, I was yeah. thinking like, oh, 40 years and you're looking, where'd 40 years go past? That's that's the worst part. Not the fun part about it. Yeah, it's I funny. think a lot of people do make that mistake. You know, they get to 40 and they're like, you know, what the hell? Where did it all go? I think because once you hit 20 and you're in like a full routine of work and you're... Routine. It's not like we're from school changing to uni or TAFE and mm. that, that period of time there's a lot of changes yeah, so you yeah. feel pr- progression. But once you start working in like stuck routine sets in. It's the same thing every day. It's the same thing every day and you forget how fast time flies. Mm. Yeah, that's true. I think there's something, someone was telling me there's something prophetic about turning 40 and yeah, onwards. Yeah, I think was saying like as well. It's a time <laughs> where then you should start preparing for death more and you know, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not entirely sure so I don't want to really get into it. But yeah, man, it's been a, it's been a, alhamdulillah. We said that we were going to come back until we had finished this book. We have to finish this book. That's We've been doing it for over a year now. Don't start and fini- not, uh, not yeah, finish. Uh, that's it. But I'll be honest, when we when we took that hiatus, if you want to call it, um, and I felt the book was like, 
halfway in between. A part of me was like, the, a part of me was cut. I was like, ready. Nah, I was there's gonna no be stubborn about it. I, wasn't I was like, there's no go. way, there's no way this can end without finishing the book. Yeah. I don't want it to end, period, to be honest, even when the book finishes, but inshallah. Yeah, you want to keep going? Yeah, bro. Inshallah, we'll see how Good on you, boys. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> 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 nah, nah. If we can find, inshallah, something productive to do, mm. um, you know, and we can do it online. <laughs> <laughs> well, but the Arif, what's with you in online? <laughs> he lives in the world now. That's his problem. Oh, yeah. It's not, it's not that, especially on days like this where it's just from ha- work, go to my parents' house or something, and then eat there, go to masjid, then come here. I only get home till like 10 o'clock or something like that, mm. which is not a big deal. I, uh, not that I, I'm fussed. Cause I, I, I don't know that. about you, but I love being I busy. That. I love those nights. No, I love being busy, Yeah, but, yeah, but not all, not to the not extent day, where you're yeah. not at home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't mind. I'll be busy at home. Yeah. I can I can mm. do m- classes or lessons on my I do online, online courses. Yeah. Or I go to the masjid near my house or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can still be busy doing work around the house, whatever it may be. But yeah, I'm like you. I love being busy. I hate, I hate idle time. Like yeah. them, I do like it sometimes. You get you get to watch a show or Here two or whatever, but idle time, like it, it kills yeah. you. Yeah. E- even with that, if it starts to like, if you start to feel yourself going in a circle, like if I'm on my phone and I just like end the the scrolling type, yeah, I'll start to lose it as soon as I as soon as I realize and I click, I'm like, bro, snap. I guess so. The, not the press. I get up like and I'm like, myself. Bro, yeah, I gotta it's stop. Good, going. you should be like. Uh, didn't you didn't you cut all that stuff out? Yeah, yeah, I cut off the stuff before cut Ramadan. It. But it's like yeah, good. also when when older people tell you, oh, you know, I'm going through now. What was it? What was the first app that you said those short videos? It was like was it Instagram or like Vine? Yeah, Vine, Vine started with a seven second video. That. Now every app has those shorts, right? Your yeah, YouTube, yeah, yeah. YouTube. I get people sending me like Instagram. Instagram shorts and then Facebook shorts. My bad, of sure. And then to me, it's upsetting when you see like a 45 year old sharing them. I'm like, so you're sitting down and going. Scrolling, and scrolling, and scrolling, scroll and scrolling, and scrolling, yeah. mm. bro. <laughs> and scrolling. Like bro. 45-year-old mom with six kids, oh, like 65-year-old man. Yeah, it's, bro, it's embarrassing. Yeah. Bro, you got the ones where the you got the ones where the video like plays to the end, starts again, then plays to the end, starts again, and then you get the ones where the video ends and then goes to the next one. Yeah, now those ones it's like automatically keeping you going. And you know what now? If the video is longer than 30 seconds, you're not watching it. Bro, yeah. I skip straight past that. <laughs> but that's what well, that's yeah. That's that's actually humiliating. Like it's sad, humiliating. Yeah. It's shameful to think that that an individual now has a time like an attention span that short. <coughs> and I, mm. I feel it myself. Yeah. Sometimes my attention span is that short. Like if I do get watch a video, yellow yellow, put on one point five times speed or quick <laughs> skip skip ten seconds, watch something, then skip skip yeah. ten seconds to find you know, the 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 crux of the of the video. Which is sa- sad. That's why, I, like, you know how I am. I cut out. All, I I haven't. You have ha- to cut it out, otherwise you're gonna uh, have no yeah, life. I've never had that stuff in the from the get go. Only YouTube, and even that now. Now like it's becoming. You said, that's what I'm saying. That YouTube yeah, shorts YouTube's is bad. Shorts is, is 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 it's getting me sometimes, and yeah. so it's a shame. Yeah, bro. My mom a couple of days ago she found <coughs> out about the times 1.5 speed on YouTube. It was like <laughs> she saw Revelation, bro. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I can watch 1.5 times more videos. <laughs> it's not about saving time. I can watch more videos now <laughs> in the same amount you know, of time. You know why? I remember this is, was at school when I heard this fact that if you were to spend your whole life going through just YouTube, you would never finish the content. This was at school. Yeah. Now imagine it's like there's no, so much content that you need. You won't finish it in a lifetime. That's why there's so much. No, oh, you wouldn't. You know, I want to ask uh, before we get into this, the book. Definitely. How do they store these videos, Mazin? You're the IT guy. Like, Gigabyte. there's Gigabyte. nonstop, it, like data being uploaded yeah, and uploaded and uploaded. Everyone has like a terabyte of photos on their it's Google Photos. Messy. Everyone has a Dropbox. Everyone has a Google Drive. And then there's all these millions and trillions of hours of YouTube videos. It's just massive, massive servers globally, everywhere. I mean, you got the biggest ones in the states. They got yeah. like across the across the United States but they've got them everywhere now and a lot of the a lot of the content gets served from the servers nearest to you so but uh, that but, but the thing is like at the end of the day do you they get remember, deleted eventually and overridden it, n- it depends it depends on the policy of the company but yeah. most of them know like I mean YouTube you'll see videos from when like you're first made like yeah. 15 years ago but, something was made but I think 20 years ago. the thing with the thing with those is you got to remember that as more videos get uploaded more income is being generated for the company and therefore, they can invest afford in to more. invest in more, like so larger storage. I'm doing a job in Macquarie Park. I didn't know yeah. what it was. I wouldn't say it is, but you're driving in, and it's like something like you know, Incredibles. When I drive up to that fancy lady's mm. house, that bollard's going in the ground, yeah, like yeah. six gates open up, enter, massive building, and it's just I don't know, PCs or just monitors and monitors and just like 
this humongous facility of just like computers everywhere. That's what it is. And with like these the storage, it's a storage yeah. facility to store With these things, it's data. infinite. Because I think, like, you remember these, for example, YouTube is owned by Google, right? Every Google search is oh, generating yeah. revenue. Every, yeah, right. like, yeah. Google ads, non-stop. Like, so it's not, it's infinite, practically infinite income. That, like, now I'll go, I'll buy a terabyte now for like, it used to be, I remember I used to pay 80 bucks for like 500 gigs. Now I pay 80 bucks, I get four terabytes. Like yeah. it's uh, you know storage. I don't is even, cheap who, who even pays for storage anymore? You just upload online. it online. Yeah, and download cloud. it from wherever you want it. Just memory cards, that big thing for eight megabytes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you won't fit a video yes, on that anymore. Allah. Funny story. We gotta cut the story short. But I remember when my brother first bought the PS2, Ooh. an eight megabyte. Right, that is cut. An I eight megabyte. An eight megabyte. Is that how memory how card? Yeah. Eight an eight megabyte memory card was like one of the higher end yeah, memory yeah, cards, exactly. and it was expensive. My brother had just bought the PS2 and he had the game Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> he did not turn off the PlayStation for two weeks because <laughs> he didn't have memory cards. He couldn't, no, he couldn't buy one at the time. So literally he'd play and then switch from TV to... Uh, it yeah, yeah. It AV. Wasn't AV, yeah, it was AV. TV to AV. TV to AV and then he'd play for two weeks on the weekends because my mum wouldn't let him yeah. play on the weekdays for two yeah, weeks, three oh weeks until he'd done all his work. And then eventually he finished it. So then two weeks later, the PS2 got a break. <laughs> <laughs> he turned it off. I'm surprised it lasted. Because it didn't have a memory card. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember like that. I was the same thing. I wouldn't turn it off. My mom would end up forcing me to turn it off for the, for the electricity. And my auntie once saw me like crying upset. And then the next day, it was like a memory card in my bed. And I'm like, I, I love you. That. I was so happy. Well, I was so happy. But you used to start a game from the start every time you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. I'll get into a story at the end, so we'll get into the book. And yeah, then, uh, bro, we need we've to. We've got a comment on YouTube. We'll be here. Um, they were saying, uh, I think the point about 40, saying, didn't the prophets attain prophethood at 40? I think that was the more. Remember how you were saying about the, the 40? Something yeah, prophetic about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. I'm yeah. not too sure about all the other prophets. But what you were saying, I remember someone else was telling us about the, f- the 40s, or like you should be aiming to less of work and more ibadah at that time, preparing yourself. Yeah, that's right, preparing yeah. yourself for sure. I always tell like older people, I'm like, like I tell my dad, for instance, he's working now, but I used to tell him, dad, I'm like, why don't you, you know, the, the hadith of praying 40 days, all your salah with the imam. Mm. Yeah. I'm like, dad, why don't you aim to do that? And then when I think of it, I'm like, it's easy to say it, but I love to, do it, to do it, I'm like thinking to myself, man, if I had, if I wasn't working, even that still would be very, very hard. Mm. But everyone should be trying to aim to, you know? prepare for the death M- regardless of your age i think regardless that's the thing we too caught up yalla bring in us in. Right, <coughs> so getting into the book uh, where we left off the next chapter that we were going to go through was in our book it's called bravery what's it in yours i mean bravery as well courage courage so bravery and courage um i think to be honest with this when i was reading this one <coughs> i felt personally attacked um, <laughs> 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 why um, but yeah bro this I'll say the same thing and I'll bring up scenario I happened yesterday. Don't wow, why do you feel personal? No, I'm not, no I'm, not too, I'm not like that too I much. I'll probably feel like the attacker, <laughs> <laughs> if anything. <laughs> no, so I, I think like when I was reading the example, I kind of went through the example, right? And, you know, actually maybe it's a good discussion to be honest to have because I've, subhanAllah, it's been something on my mind for ages uh, and it was different when we were in school versus when we were in uni and so on. Um, the example that it gave was like if you're if you're in a gathering, say, and, and you hear someone saying something or it's either incorrect or you have something to add to the conversation you sort of like back out from it and you don't add it and the reason was like oh i didn't say it because i was shy or i didn't say it because because this and that so i i find myself doing that a lot like i'll be in a gathering and i'll hear something that's going on and people might even ask a question right they'll ask a question and i'll just sit there like i'll know the answer and i just i just like leave it for everyone else hello i think back to when back when like for example in school but you've changed a lot though you used to be a lot more like that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I feel like you, you now you if you do see something incorrect some, or something no, like some that, you would you yeah. would speak something out something incorrect, now. right? So that's that's a bit, that's a bit different because I feel like that's in this case that's an obligation, right? But if something's not so much where someone's asking a question and I'm like, oh, someone will eventually answer it. You know what I mean? That mm. kind of thing, where there's no pressure on that. But one of the things that I feel gets me is like uh, I'm too cautious of what people are thinking, thinking. and and sometimes it's whether my answer is going to be incorrect or not and other times it's oh uh, what if they what if they think you're trying to show off by answering the question and like what's worse I think. yeah you go through a bunch of thoughts where subhanallah and so that's i feel like i i kind of i guess i'm putting it out there so maybe we can discuss it and talk about it um but yeah i feel like it stops me from answering a lot of questions that come up subhanallah or a lot of uh, engaging in a lot of conversations that come up but what do you what do you think is the cause of that is it because 
you're shy mm. and you like you just have a generally a reserved character right because that's mm. an option yeah or is it due to cowardice which is like the opposite yeah, of the bravery of courage if someone's right? saying something wrong would you correct them or is it just that's why i said that's talk, different yeah really so i think more idle talk if someone's yeah. doing something wrong I'll, I'll jump in and i'll correct that but even then as well sometimes you get concerned with people like what if people feel attacked by me telling them like you know uh, that's the biggest that's yeah. one of the biggest things i have and whether they're gonna re- <coughs> re- they're gonna rebuttal and then attack that's me right. or feel like feel like feel like i'm judging them or they're gonna get yeah. turned off by me giving yes. the nasiha but I always always try and turn it back to what what is you know what we've been taught like the sheikh was reading actually mm-hmm. in salah in Tarawih just then or at the talk yesterday sheikh nasim abdi mentioned we as muslims <coughs> are the compared to all the other ummas okay of the past from the previous prophets yeah. are the greatest nation and the greatest of ummas because we enjoy good and forbid evil yeah. and to do that mm. you have to speak out well yeah. you don't you should speak you out that's to. the highest mm-hmm. level right uh, the lower lower level is to you know hate it in your heart um but act out against it speak out against it or then hate it yeah. in your heart um so we as a ummah are the greatest due to the fact that we do that mm. so in order to be, be, be part, part of, of it yeah. yeah you should you should be mm. obliged and you should feel the need to do so <coughs> i think even well, if it's against your own will like as well a lot of times i'm similar like we make it an issue in our head when it's genuinely not an issue mm. like my boss also tells me there's nothing wrong with conflict so if you guys don't agree on a price whatever it is you speak your mind speak mm. his mind and then you'll get to an answer set somewhere down the line and then like it's con- it's healthy to have some conflict or s- disagreements with people otherwise if everyone agreed with each other we'd all be the same mm. um but i was like yesterday i think there was like an international speaker yesterday i was at a mosque i was praying at my auntie's house so we walked to the coast of masala there's an international speaker from overseas here and then no one at the mosque knew him literally so as we were walking mm. out he was by himself and I wanted to approach him, but I don't know why. I just, I just left it. And I just, as I drove off, I was like, bro, subhanAllah, I could have had a conversation with him, do this and that, you mm. know, just take him to a, grab a coffee and make the, ma- make the most of my time, especially because, what's it called? No one was using him, mm. you know? And I, I regret, as I was driving in my car, I'm like, I'm never going to get that opportunity again, you know? Mm. From overseas by himself. And all he would have taken for me is to salam to him, say, hey, let's, let's go for a coffee and just chat about your experiences or whatever it is. Mm. Mm. Yeah. No, for me, I that think I regret. That, yeah, I just, I just think it's like the thought of what, what people are going to say or whatever. Like the smallest example, and I've come across it many times. Yeah, you're in salah, and the person in front of you bends over, the awras all showing. Mm. I think to myself, I'm like, do I tell him? Or is he gonna be like, oh, <laughs> like, why are you looking at my awra for? Why are you looking at my Brother, you're mooning me in, in salah. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. I, don't know, you know, know, like, I was thinking about it. And I'm like, I got told two days ago. I, even though I thought I covered my awra, I tucked my pants in. He's like, oh, brother, I'm like, thanks. There's nothing wrong. Yeah. And if he takes it harsh, then khalas, that's, that's him. I always try to think back to. But that's uh, difficult. See, like, if I was to say it to you and you say thank you, it's like, hey, yeah, yeah. I feel yeah, relieved. That's right. I actually feel I'm like, okay, they didn't take it yeah. the wrong way. They didn't like give me a dirty or something. Like, like recently I had an experience where a family friend of mine, they're traveling and I s- they took their kids trick or treating. Mm. Okay. Yeah. In during October, mm. whatever, whenever whenever Halloween was, and in my heart I'm like, man, burning. I'm burning. I'm like. It's uploaded on social media. I'm like, someone showed it to me. Like, isn't this your cousin? Like, not, they're not my cousin, but they're just yeah, like, yeah. isn't this your cousin? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, man, do I tell him? Do I not tell him? Is he going to take it the wrong way? Is he not going to take it the wrong way? But then I thought to myself, you know, I I think, you know, the hadith, yeah. you do not, you are not brothers until you love for each other, mm-hmm. or you love for yourself. Okay. If I was doing something wrong, okay. I would love for someone to correct me and if I'm heading in a path that's bad for me or Jahannam ridden so to speak okay I would love for someone to correct me okay (coughs) whether it's against my own will and what I like or you know so therefore I mustered up the courage to actually tell him I sent him like Mm. a seven minute voice recording because he's overseas and you know what his response was beautiful mind you I did really soften it yeah not not that uh, I made it airy fairy. I, I was very yeah, nice yeah, yeah. in how I said it. He was like, you know what? Every, a lot of people have messaged me, but Jazakumullah Khair and your one was the best approach, nicest mm. way, this, that. I really appreciate it. I'm going to delete the videos and rectify my actions. Mm. Yeah. Okay? But, like, one, it took a lot from me to 
ثاد والله ثاد يقول لك يا باك اند فور بس تو وانس هي ديد ريسبوند ان ذات واي ات واز لايك خي لايك اي واز سو هابي اند ام لايك You know, it gives me that little courage to do it next time again. Mm-hmm. Whereas if I had gotten back, if I had gotten backlash for it, it's like, the next man, time you gotta do, do it. Yeah, do I want a backlash again? Mm-hmm. But regardless of whether you get a good response or not, you have to, you know, it's convey the message. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those things yeah. that, like yeah. we say, it's it's easier said than done. But you gotta keep saying it in your head at least until you do. I always, I try to think, and it doesn't always work. But I try to think of the. Um, Uh, the advice that Luqman uh, alayhi salam gave to you know, salam, yeah, gave to his yeah. son um, where he says um, bil ma'ruf anil munkar, and he follows it, وَصْبِرْ مَا أَصَابَكَ وَصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكَ yeah. and have like uh, I remember the sheikh was giving a tafsir on it and he was saying that because whenever you do enjoin in the good or forbid the evil you're bound to get something back yeah. so the advice subhanAllah was followed with وَصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكَ because you're going to need sabr for what comes your way when you do that I try and remember that, but subhanAllah, it's just, you always, like you said, that was worse, it's just always in your head. So I think it's something to, to work on for, for, you know, in general. As well, I think even if you mention it um, and he takes it the wrong way, at least you can sleep or move on knowing that you didn't yeah. do anything wrong. You didn't do it out of hate. You did it out of, <coughs> for Allah's sake, you know, yeah. and you did it with pure intentions and mm. to move on. And you know what as well, they might initially respond distastefully, but then they might go back later and think about it. You know what? What that brother told me today actually was right. Maybe he didn't say it in the best way, whatever. But and then he rectifies his mistakes or her mistakes, whatever it may be. So, inshallah, you do it with the right intention, and khair will come for it, whether it's for you alone or for both of you, the the receiver and the yeah. conveyor. So I think I think that's a very good point because even if it clicks in their head now or in ten years time. Like you never know. Like I'm sure we experience it with our own selves. Like someone, you think ten years down the track, you think of something someone said ten years yep. ago, and it just and it just clicks. I'm yeah, and can't and that anything. me, I can't remember. <laughs> anything. Yeah, but like you said, that wouldn't that wouldn't ever happen ten years from now if you didn't do it now. That's right. Does that make yeah. sense? Though it's like hard to say. Like oh my god, what am I gonna do if it's gonna click for him in ten years? But you know, <laughs> doesn't matter. You do what you can, and at the end of the day. If you're not brave, you're a coward. Yeah. And uh, I hate to be like the Jews, but a Jew is the Jews are known to be cowards. The the cowardice, you know? Yeah. And the previous yeah. the the Christians and the Jews, they don't enjoy good and forbid evil. Everyone just does their own thing. Their yeah. own thing. They they don't care about each other, so to speak. I mean, there is uh, their own they have their own communal stuff, but they're generally cowards and it takes a lot it takes A certain amount of bravery to be able to enjoy good and forbid evil. Subhanallah, so. I didn't even think of that when you mentioned that. Mm. Okay, as you said, uh, as you mentioned that those nations are cowards. I was just thinking about when they were told to enter the, enter the holy lands, and they said, "No, we're just we're just sitting here. We're happy. You you go, let us we'll know when you're you. done. Yeah, yeah. we'll come That's after and celebrate with you. That's what it is. I guess in this case, you're kind of <coughs> you're leaving it for someone else to correct if they do, and and not really taking that initiative yourself to yeah. enjoy in the good. Or forbid the evil. And you miss out on the opportunity for reward. <laughs> someone else, inshallah, someone else will advise them. Yeah. And they'll get the reward. And mm. for they rectify that issue, for instance, you tell them, for instance, you tell someone what they're doing in their salah or in, in their belief or whatever is incorrect. They rectify their action. Then they teach it to their kids and their kids and their kids. There's an investment opportunity for you yeah. going down the drain. You know, uh, your return on investment... Mate, yeah. let's talk yeah. about stocks. You just gotta have, <laughs> uh, you just gotta have an appetite for risk. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. But uh, uh, this was, I think, one a really good chapter that mm. Muslims in general need to be a bit more brave, yeah, a bit more courageous and outspoken in goodness. Even in, even talking to Dawa or non-Muslims and our speech with Dawa, and I feel shy explaining to them my religion because they're gonna be like, oh, what's this guy on? Or mm. there's so much media really like brainwashes yeah. them stuff, but. When you be brave and you explain to them, they see your side and they see your point of view. And like, I, I feel like when I explain to people, they actually understand and they agree sometimes, mm. you know, and they're like, all right, I can see your point of view, or whatever it is. It probably comes down to the way you do it, though. Like what Ahmed was saying, that, that person was saying that the way you did it helped. I, I, don't, I just thought about it. Remember. You, were, you were there, I think. Um, we were at a camp and there's this old gentleman that owns the whole facility and 
we've had experience with him in the past many times and he's a nice guy and he just lives in like the outback he comes down to his facility every now and again when when he has people there and i'm like man let me just talk to this guy and i was a bit nervous because all the other boys were there i'm like i'm nowhere near qualified compared to some of the other boys that were there but i'm like just like hey dave you know uh what do you believe in? And I started talking to him about religion and then he's like, oh, Jesus is, you know, the the saviour in Christ. I'm like, why is he so special? He's like, oh, because, you know, he's born without a father. Yeah. I'm like, so what if I told you of someone who's born without a father and a mother? He's like, I'm like, don't you think they sh- they, they deserve to be worshipped as well? Like, aren't, aren't they miraculous? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, yeah, I guess so. He's like, well, Adam, Ali said, Adam was born without a mother and a father. He's like, blimey. <laughs> <laughs> never thought of it like that and he's like you know what you've got me stumped and he, he was taken back and he tried to rebut me another way and you know what he's like you know what you give me food for thought I was gonna just say I'm like you know that. what uh, you know what I told him I'm like you when I see you next year I'll be calling you that wood <laughs> 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 but you know what like inshallah man I like no, him yeah. and well, it took literally uh, some jovial conversation five minutes ten minutes and <coughs> you know, you That's never know. Word. I was looking for that word today, bro. Jovial. Jovial. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I've never used that in my life. It just came to my mind now. Yeah, Probably not it. even the right word. <laughs> no, it is. It is. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, that was just uh, you. You reminded me of that that story. So yeah, is that uh? Did you want to add anything else to that? No, I like it. I was gonna say it also makes people when when people see that you're not a coward and you speak up, it makes them respect you. But I was pretty sure I read that in, in the following chapters. So we'll keep going, inshallah. Hey, before we continue, is uh, I'm trying to turn the face this way when I cough. Right? Is it coming up in the audio? No, I can't you got hear headphones it. on, so no, nah, it's alright. Yeah, it should be going because these ones are not quite a bit close, anyway. <laughs> yeah, just making sure. Um, so to to wrap up the chapter, it says a point of view. Train yourself for one hour's patience leads to victory. So That's that was um, yeah. So one hour's patience leads to victory. So that wraps up that chapter. The next one was hold fast to principles hold fast to principles or steadiness on principles and this is i think uh, another another important chapter that also ties in with the previous one as well bravery because i believe yeah. that this one requires that um i'm sure we'll kind of go through some some scenarios we've been through that require that kind of bravery to to be steady or um or holding require you to hold fast to your principles yeah um Oh, yeah, see, that's the first part. People's importance in the eyes of others is determined by the strength of their personality and the extent to which they remain firm upon their principles. I'm sure, sure I read it. Um, mm. But, yeah, like, so many a times that it's not a good look when we're, well, what's the word called? Not hypocritical, but our actions with, non, for me, for, no, with non-Muslims don't reflect your Islamic values, mm. you know? Like, I feel like I'm respected more. I know we're always bringing up work, but it's probably the most scenarios that we have. I feel like I was respected more when I told my boss, look, I'm not comfortable doing these jobs at a uh, brewery center, like a place that does beer or stuff like that. Oh, why yeah. not? Look, I don't drink. What's? It's going to be ironic if I don't drink and I'm going supporting this like factory, you mm. know? Or I'm not going to work at this center or this center because it's immoral, like an immoral place. And he realizes, you know, and he's like, all right, like I never thought of that working. He's just thinking about the income mm. rather than not thinking about like, what does this place actually do? You know, if it's a adult facility or something like that, mm. you know? Hello, everyone's gonna think I go into. I don't enter buildings. I just do <laughs> external work, man. <laughs> Far out. Yeah. Like, watch is, these. Is that building in YouTube? inspector? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Checking the painting. <laughs> Watching the paint dry. <laughs> 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 Comes with a paint bucket and just throws it on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it does. Yeah. When it comes to the bravery, uh, the, I think here it says uh, it's referring to a strong personality. But I think if we're gonna just talk about like uh, a, a person and their personality themselves. You will notice someone that is strong to their values. You tend to have more respect for them. Wallah. Like you, Wallah. you actually like as much as you want to, like as much as anyone wants to talk about that person, you just you feel like you just can't yeah. because they stick to it. They have those values, and no matter what you say, they're going. They're not going to waver. And what what that shows, I guess, is is uh, it kind of like it gives them a very firm personality. You feel like. You feel like you can rely on that person because they're not going to move. You feel like you can trust that person. They're not going to change. Yeah. Things like that. But if you go and someone who one day he's like this, the next day, depending on the circumstances, he's like, uh, what do they say? Change is like the wind. Yeah. It's yeah. like that. It's just... And what I find is even <coughs> if you disagree with him, at the end of the day, you still respect him. Yeah, of course. You might not agree eye to eye, and but you still respect him. And there's so many sports personalities like mm. that. Like just, for example, in MMA, like 
biggest Muslim star right now is like Khabib mm. and he's so respected even by non-Muslims because how firm he sticks to his principles you know mm. how he doesn't swear he doesn't do anything he doesn't go out with females or whatever it is mm. and a lot of non-Muslims respect him or whatever he does and saying like this guy's a man you know he doesn't back down from his word he said like a lot of things I'm gonna g I'll probably get carried away he said I'm gonna retire and everyone's like oh I'll give him three months the money's gonna be good enough he's gonna come back and then everyone's like look bro he gave his word to his mum the money is enticing you can see them waving millions and millions but he's not budging and you mm. know he gets more respect like that that's what it is you feel like that person is not like swayed change a swayed or easily like uh, attracted by the worldly things as well because that, that's essentially what's going to change your principles true. whether it's yeah, true. Um, whether it's money whether it's a woman whether it's food whether it's fame business, fame whatever it is, yeah. anything that these are all worldly things and especially obviously when we're talking about principles we're predominantly talking about like islamic principles if uh you have certain principles certain values that go against islam and you think no this, this is something that i want to hold steadfast to then that's that's contributing to a strong personality that you have and and people will see that from even non-muslims and uh, like like i said they can talk but at the end of the day doesn't look um <coughs> in the west it's very being a minority as Muslims, mm. it can be very, very difficult to hold on to your principles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The temptations which comes up in the next chapter are very high and you always feel like the you eyes, I, eyes I personally you. don't, but I know people do feel like they're the all eyes are on them, they're the oppressed minority and to get out of that little corner that they're really put into, they it's do have mold. to compromise in yeah, their yeah. principles. And one compromise is a slippery slope. Yeah. One compromise in your principles is a slippery slope. I'll take it back to myself, okay? I'm sure many people have gone through this. I had probably never said a swear word in my life till I was about the age of eight years old. Some f That's pretty young, isn't it? Huh? Don't you reckon mm -hmm. eight years old? Yeah. yeah I think so. <laughs> pretty bad kid, to be honest. Bad kid? Yeah, thanks, bro. <laughs> well, Eight's like year three, bro, or something. I know, right? Yeah. Eight years old. Well, he's still probably his mum's changing his nappies at eight. <laughs> she still changes my nappies now. Thank you. Nah, but look, uh, some kid <coughs> bit, uh, two years older than me that pick, picked on me, took my hat to be a smart ass, and I compromised and I swore. Okay? Even though my mum had, you know, my mum had. Uh, threatened me with burning my tongue on a stove if I ever swore. Bro, that's I remember. Sort of I remember, bro. My mom got matches once, and she pulled like litter in front of me. Oh wow, like, that's oh. bad. I thought my nah. mom putting chili on my mouth was gonna be bad. No, nah, that's that's sort of the sort of thing. My my love preserve my mom, man. That's the sort of way she raised us, and I will I will raise my kids and my kids' kids like that. How okay. How's it so yeah. taste? <laughs> 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 she was gonna say was it an induction cooktop? <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyways, um, so. After that, like swearing became easy for me, and and then to actually overcome swearing took me a, a while. I was in my teens when I realized, man, what the hell am I doing? And I and I overcame the swearing. But all it took for me was that first time when I was eight years old, yeah. nine years old, whatever I was, to swear once when I got really angry, and then after that it just rolled off my tongue. Yeah. Never, never in front of my mom or around family. But I was, when I was at yeah. school, it yeah. just rolled off my tongue. Subhanallah, that's know? all it takes. Just one, one slip up. And one compromise. And w why now I, I say this? Because I use that as a small example. I was not even bad like, at the time. Okay. Um, in I find Muslims in Australia, but in America, the, in the Western context, very very slippery slope that a lot of people are going down like especially in like california and stuff the the woke mm. states you you the muslims get oppressed there's a terrorist attack or something like that they play the victim card and then the lgbtq community supports the muslims and then the next time the lgbtq community is being oppressed right, the muslims mean. the muslims support oh they them. supported us we should support them yeah you know even though it goes against everything that we we know and believe in let me support them and, and then, then we find a way to justify a, it they find a way to justify it one two three now you have gay mams gay muslims transsexuals and this and that and allah musta'an man like but if taking it back to that first compromise okay whether it was one leader or one individual whatever it may be yeah. it's led down to a super ship now the floodgates have opened like Every second person there, ev every second person I see on social media from America, I'm exaggerating, but those are the people that are getting the limelight. They're gay. 
Muslims. I don't need to wear the hijab. I don't need to, you know, do this. I don't need to pay whatever they say. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about, and everyone knows what I'm talking about. It is ridiculous how much compromise is coming out of certain Muslim <coughs> communities in America and in the Arab countries, everywhere, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. But Arab like, well. all it takes is literally for a few or whatever individuals to not ho- st- hold fast to their comp- uh, to their principles, and that's it. Floodgates are open. Good you luck know, closing the floodgates. You know, it becomes more and more of a reality that you can envision or see, like, as you grow older, is the hadith of the hot coal. Wallah, like, the more I get older, the more I'm like, yeah, all right. Like, mm. Holding on to your the religion? Ho- holding on to your religion is like holding on to hot coal. Because now, it's like, wallah, like, you standing to your principles, you're the gharib inso- inside the Muslim community. Yeah. You know, oh, you're doing in, inside the Muslim community. <laughs> that's well, what I'm saying. Wallah, that's true. <laughs> like, you just being, a, like, it's not even religious. You just praying. Oh, he's, he's too strict. He's like, this. He's you know, that. I was like, my heart was broken. I'm telling you, I don't yeah. know if I mentioned that he, new guy comes from, from work, uh, joins work. He's Lebanese, right? And what's it called? Um, Stafazim. Lebanese joins it. He's born in Lebanon, 25 years. He came here five years old. So he's older, older guy. Speaking to him, I couldn't. I didn't know if he's Muslim or not Muslim, right? Mm. So anyway, Friday comes and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna ask him. You know, if he's too shy, I'm gonna build up the courage and ask him. Look, hey, bro, are you Muslim? I just wanted to ask. If not, it's fine. If you're Muslim, I'm going to go pray Jumat. I'll take you with you. I'll show you the closest place. He's like, oh, I'm Muslim, but I don't really pray. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, all right, we're going Jumat. Like, some, you know how you have some Muslims that don't pray five days, yeah, but they pray Jumat? Jumat yeah. I'm like, let's go Jumat. He's like, no, nah, no. Nah. I'm like, all right, no worries. Come back and after Jumat, and I come back and it's a typical non-Muslim company. Friday Friday nights, what do they do? They drink. Come yeah, back the and there's a, bo- there's a bottle in his hand. And I'm looking at him. He looks at me and then he hides it. And I think I just wanted the, the world to swallow me, bro. I'm just like, we've come so far and dropped all our principles that it's gone that far like yeah i don't want to say not muslim anymore but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, there, man. yeah i know i know people in in other countries bro someone in just to fit germany, in germany yeah, amsterdam those are, bro like they, they're just they found out that i was muslim but that they, they were so i don't know it was a bit weird that they it was like to me but like Oh yeah, I'm Muslim, but but I don't like I don't do that like all that stuff and whatever. I, was I like, don't identify with. Uh, I was like, what stuff? Like, oh, like you know, like the <laughs> fasting, praying, all that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, so how are you Muslim? And but I asked it in a nice way, and they're like, you know, because like my dad and mom, whatever, they were. They think it's like ethnicity. It's yeah. like oh, I'm Jewish half now. Lebanese. It's like Jewish now. My it's my dad culture. was Lebanese, and my mom was saying, I've heard people say that, but I'm half Muslim. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like go go go. We don't want your half. Astaghfirullah, yeah. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> oh, that's a joke, but um, that's really bad. And you know, like you said the hadith of holding on to the hot coal. Uh, I don't know if it was you that said the hadith that day. No, no, it wasn't. It was one of the other boys. But I always think of this hadith where the Muslims get to a point where they will copy the Christians and they will copy the Christians and Jews step by step, inch by inch, to the point where if they were to step into a religious hole, they would follow them into it. Yeah, we just want to be Western. That's yeah. it, Western and. I don't know if I'm far fetched in this far fetched in this thing, in this example. You guys can <coughs> hold me back and you know, shut my mouth up and then can delete five I seconds know where the every time. Is anymore, they've but moved. I'm gonna go there. You know you said you feel foreign in like the Muslim community? Yeah. Okay, sometimes. I don't understand what it is within the Muslim community, but I feel like we have it just from a physical, physical aspect very, very few men. Yeah. Very, very few men. I mean, like, just because the men and the women in the in the West are shaving their legs and plucking their eyebrows and wearing tight, tight clothes, every Muslim man, almost, yeah. they're, they're bit this buff. They've got a beard this long. They've got shaved arms, shaved legs, shaved everything. And I hear some of them, you see their plucked eyebrows. Ear piercings, nose piercings. No, 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 not that far. Not, that far, not that far. Not that far. Ear piercings. They do, but I'm saying he's I've, not going. I've seen, okay, yeah. I've seen ear piercings, but that's very, very few. Yeah. Okay? Mm. But every Tom, Dick, and Harry has shaved legs, shaved arms, and oh, bro, I play sports. Oh, bro, it gives me rashes. Oh, bro. I'm like, please, please, stop, stop, yeah, stop with the bull, sh- bull crap, okay? Forgive me for my language. Excuses, yeah. It's because. Uh, David Beckham and this person, they start shaving and they, they have all these body types where they have no hair whatsoever. And now, and then this guy does it for sport. The NRL players do it for sport and whatever it may be. Now I was like, oh, I got to do it. I can't get the tape onto my knee because it sticks to the hair. I can't do it. 
Even Whatever with the beard. I think people mostly now grow the beard now. Oh, it's a, it's, trend. It's a, it's a trend. But if it wasn't, it's like, oh, it's too itchy when it grows. Bro, what a, it's the excuses, a trend, I remember as a bro. kid, the excuse I used to hear is like I'd, from people, oh, it's too itchy to grow. But now everyone's got one. And then I can tell you, yeah. I can almost say, I'm I'm almost 100% sure these guys are Muslim, yeah? But I'm not, I'm not, I, now because everyone with a long beard, yeah, they, they're they sarcas and whatever it may be, like Christians and whatever. They're, they're, <laughs> everyone's growing a beard, okay? Yeah. Um, I'm walking through the shopping center going to work because my one of my stores is in the shopping center, and the guys like they're outside one of those. I was walking past the shop that has sells phones, and on opposite it is a like a Asian manicure pedicure area, yeah. or whatever. The bro, the guys like the p- tough boys, muscly, big, boys. big beards, okay. The guy's like, hey, bro, you want to go and do your eyebrows? He's like, nah, I done mine last week or l- yesterday or something like that. I'm like, bro, are you serious? Like, is this is this what a man has come to? Let me look. <laughs> <laughs> bro, like, that's that's what I mean. Like, there's no oh, st- st- holding fast or st- steadiness on their principles. Like, th- forget, the, forget the point of whether or not shaving your legs or not is haram. Yeah. Okay, I'm not saying that. But like just your principles of manliness, okay, yeah. not just religion, just principle of being a man. Like it's down the drain. It is literally pedicures, manicures, down yeah, the yeah. drain. It's Men going for pedicures, manicures, c- colored nails, and this and that, and freaking. I re- I remember <sighs> as my blood is born. I gotta bro. walk out, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was with <laughs> I, I remember <laughs> as like in, it's not not many years ago, subhanallah. But as I was sort of like going through my early adult sort of teen years one of, one of my mentors actually said to me and he was like in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives two descriptions I believe it was two only of men like where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explicitly says Rijal and then gives a description after it and I think uh, um, if I'm not mistaken two of them both of them sorry one of them was the the one where he says I don't want to misquote it in Arabic so it says that they're not um the tijara, like the trade or mm-hmm. bay'ah, sale, like uh, pretty much worldly things, doesn't distract them from dhikrillah, from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is essentially worldly things. That was the first one. And the second one was related to essentially them enjoining in like uh, the right things. I don't think it was like the enjoining good forbid the evil, but doing the right things and keeping a, a, a steadfast household, like a pious household. Like their family, like looking after their family and making sure that their family is um, is a pr- pretty much upon yeah. upon that. And that comes down to this: pretty much holding steadfast to your to your principles. That was it, and that was his explanation to me. He's like, that's the only two times that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions a description for rijal in the Quran, and it's directly that they're not distracted by the worldly things at all, and that nothing wavers them or t- turns them away from. Their religion. What you were saying about family, because we <coughs> I heard it yesterday in the, in the khutbah, uh, like uh, in, in Tarawih, there was like, oh, like the usual excuses that the community offers is just like, oh, you know, the imams aren't taking care of these issues. Look at our kids running around, blah blah blah. And it's like, all right, maybe there might be half a fair point, but they're like, there's not enough imams or students or knowledge or whatever it is. And it's they were saying it's like, why do, are we raising our kids to be like a hindrance and burden to these imams? <coughs> are we raising our kids to be a solution and to be helping them mm. and to be you know, Can doing stuff because them. these days people just raise their kids and it's embarrassing. Well, like even uh, I probably shouldn't say it, but like kids, you just see now five, ten year olds and he's on his phone the whole time. Like the mum's gone for what well, last saw yesterday. Mum's gone for a walk in the street and the kid's on his iPad following her in, in a walk. And I'm like, oh, my God, a ten year old kid boy. I've never seen a ten year a boy dance. He's doing like dances in a corner. I'm like, come on, bro. Like Muslim boy. Yeah, I'm telling you, like a ten year old <laughs> Muslim boy dancing. like. Go play soccer. Go do something yeah. like, as you're saying, like a man. Manly, like yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah. God, bro. Don't worry. But that's what it, it is. It boils my butt. You know what it is? Because the parents are too soft. Uh, they're, they're too, with, they're too yes. worried about themselves but more I've these days. But like, also I've heard many parents openly say, I'm not bothered to raise them. That's all the time. Or they think the school's going to raise them. Like, Why do you, you have know him? what? At work, they yeah. come in, they get their kids eyes tested, and they're running amok. They're running amok. The kids are... And the parents always complain about, oh, I can't be bothered for this, this, that. And the mums, like, mums, dads, Botox, mm, makeup, yeah. all this. Ma- Muslims, Muslims. Like, 50-year-old women, Muslim women, Botox. Like, wh- mm. and their kids are running amok. Why? Because they're more worried about their themselves. physical looks and themselves and everything like that as opposed to <coughs> raising their kids the right way. 
you know what is a deception as well like it's easy to use this analogy so i'll move it on like we say a lot of times like our oh, females sometimes or oh, whatever get married only for the wedding like they're all they're dreaming about mm. is the wedding another trend is swear to god it, same thing is that oh they want to have a kid just for the sake of those first three to four years where it's enjoyable mm. you know and a kid's and cute instagram, and 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 instagram. And the, oh. but they don't think all right Habib, you're gonna have a kid after he's four or five years old he's gonna be hard to take care of and it's a challenge and it's that's it that's gonna be your lifestyle yeah. it's but not as simple you can't just give him up for adoption at four. you know what even the guys are like that i want to have a kid so i can set, upload photos on instagram and this and that that's you not know, the purpose you know you said the girls the girls their the whole life they dream for their wedding the guys are like that now the guy's like that. I bro, go I gotta get a million dollars worth of cars and this and that. And, bro, I've seen weddings. For one okay? day. They're like a club. Yeah, I, yeah. I know someone. I, I, I personally know him, okay? The, his father spent $180,000 on one night. On one night for that wedding. What's that? Hell on, man. On yeah, one man. night. I don't I speak to him. I, don't, I just know from him back from school. Yeah. Okay? On one night, and the guy loves it more than the girl, bro. It's the guys, he he loves dream. the guys. Yeah, it's their dream now more than the girl's dream, bro. It's like, mm. what's wrong with the guys these days and the men these days? What's wrong with everyone? <laughs> oh man. Yeah. And I used like to <laughs> for photos and videos, bro. I used to I used to go to IKEA for props. <laughs> now they have children. <laughs> <laughs> like as this, this, this. Gotta get back to the book. No, no, the whole lot. <laughs> we're going to. Look, uh, I guess in, in terms blood, of tying it to the topic, like, yeah, it's not. It's not about judging the different types of people. It's about identifying that each of these are just examples of people or, compromising. or like compromising the religion and the values. Or, or really. values. Yeah, it's values. I'm sure these these same people at some point, and I've seen it many times. At some point, said, "Oh, I would never do this, yeah, or yeah. I would never do that." And so often they say that, and like you said, it's one slip up and boom, down the... Down the you know what, it's perfect. They look at another, for yeah, example, so. if we're using that example, like we see another... One, 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 yes. one time he compromised, and next thing you know, he's dead, prostrating yeah. to, uh, like to shaitan. So many guys... One say, slip oh, up, bro, one that's, compromise. That's so gay, I'd never shave my legs. Four years later, and he's playing sport, so now his legs are shaved. Like, like, same thing. It's just, what was the reason that they gave it up, most likely? pressure from other people mm. comments blah, blah, it's blah. like that with everything like everyone at the start of the year i'm gonna study i'm gonna do this that oh everyone you hear it when i have kids he's not gonna have technology he's not gonna do anything i'm gonna he's gonna speak arabic only he's gonna do this and that you give up once and it's it's down the drain so and like and a more relatable no example that you, i think we'd all be able to relate to many people listening that have corporate jobs is the as you get to the end of the year everyone has the christmas parties mid-year yeah, they yeah. have the christmas in july Hello, we're coming up to that is soon. That a thing, Christmas in July? Yeah, but they find any reason to party, is. bro. They, oh, no, Hello, no. Easter's coming up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, people are gonna go around the Easter eggs, the Christmas scavenger hunt, blah blah blah. All of these things, like you just have Eid, Eid Kringles. Yeah. You know, there's Chris yeah. Kringles, Eid but Kringles. But that's what it is. <laughs> and and when it comes to <laughs> compromising oh, on your Muslim, values, it's a question of why do I go? Oh, I go because I don't want them to think that I'm not inclusive. Or yeah. I don't want them to think that I this and that. But you got to remember, at the end of the day, we forget that the one that is in control of our job, that is in control of everything, our risk, our, everything that we have, is the one that has told us not to do all of what, these things. What shocked me is I saw, like just a simple post, like you know, if you have WhatsApp statuses, of like a body in a shroud, the dead body in a shroud, mm -hmm. it's like, was it worth you pleasing the humans all these years? And now, khalas, now it's the time that you're going to be tested. SubhanAllah. That, well, like, <laughs> it hit me like a truck. It's like... All that time, like what you were saying about the Christmas party. I remember my first job, they were trying to convince me to go to the Christmas party. They're like, oh, look, this girl went last year and look at the photo and she's wearing a hijab at the Christmas party at a pub. And I'm like, what's what's my excuse now to tell them that it's like uh, us as Muslims don't yeah. go to places? Bro, John from Finance is on the my, my, body. My, my workplace is 80% Muslims. We used to have Christmas dinners. End of year slash Christmas dinners. I told them off. We haven't had it since. I don't know if it's because they just tied us. They agreed to what I was saying. Like like save money, bro. Just invite you, bro. <laughs> Maybe, bro. Better. I said, look. I'll see. Oh, see, look. That's the end of the chapter. It's, it's what I was saying. Whoever seeks people's pleasure while angering Allah, Allah gets angry at him and makes people angry at him. And whoever seeks the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while angering people, Allah feels pleased with him and causes people to feel pleased with him. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke the truth. Allah <laughs> So we've got temptations, which we pretty much spoke about uh, a yeah. lot. And, and I think these these three trio ties in together. Mm. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Um, Look, uh, uh, the way I think of it, you know, and I've seen it time and time again, is stick to your guns and Allah will bless your path. Yeah. Stick to your guns and Allah will bless your path. I, I know a brother 
you guys know him as well. He was looking for a job for years and years. Like, uh, okay, uh, maybe that's exaggerating. I don't know how long, but he was looking for a job for a while in radiology. Mm. Found a job, promising everything, and he's like, I have only one. I will, I will work overtime. I will do stay till six p.m. on every other day. Just on Thursday, give me an hour break as opposed Friday. to half an hour for Friday, Juma. You mean on Friday? Yeah, yeah, on Friday. You said Thursday. Sorry, did I say Thursday? Yeah, yeah. Friday. Friday it's for Juma. Like, you give me an hour a break as opposed to half an hour. I will make it up throughout the week. I won't take any breaks throughout the week. Whatever. He was willing to work extra. Like, it's at a loss for him compared yeah. to what mm. the company gained. They're like, no, sorry, we can't do that. He's like, okay, sorry, I can't work here. He didn't do that. And now, inshallah, like, Allah has blessed his family and he's studying to become a doctor. And he, he'll make mm. in five years what he would have made in the five years. in one year. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. So... Allah blessed him and he's got he's got good kids and good family and everything like that, you know? Um, stick to your guns and Allah Allah will bless you. That's just one example. I if I see and think about it, there's thousands and thousands of examples that I personally know. Yeah. Like from friends mm. and family to just random people that I've heard of. So the temptation is real, but the reward is is real. Because wow. the cause the temptation itself is exactly fake. You can get that tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> I really have. <laughs> I think for young people, wallah, like it's, it frustrates me as well because a lot of the young people, I feel aren't as staunch as we were when we were mm. kids. Like I would honestly have said no to a job that didn't let me take a Friday prayer. Mm. And I feel like a lot of young kids, it's like the father was telling me, oh, I advise my son because he's changing jobs and tell him what to look for. I'm like, look, when you go in there, interview, first thing, it's everything's good. You tell them before you leave the interview on Friday, I need to do, I need to go for an hour. Tell him, make it work. And he's like, oh, I'm scared. He's gonna not gonna mm. give me the job. Or this not like, dude, like it's Sack your the job. It's your that, religion. Thing, it's yeah. your religion. You're weighing up. It's like, all right, there's solutions around it. You can't. Okay, you need an hour break. Work the extra hour on a Friday, like sometimes I'll do. Or work the extra half an hour the day before. Or don't have lunch the day before. Don't have lunch. Go half an hour. There's a lot of Juma places that are like half an hour. Don't don't eat. Go Juma. Come back. Mm. Eat at your desk or do something else. And I, I think a lot of people also don't understand the the importance of a lot of these things. Yeah. Like a lot of people don't actually understand, for example, the importance of Juma. Right, so they were like, "Oh, yeah, but it's it's no big deal if I miss it once, twice." Three. I can miss it three times. You know yeah, right. yeah, but they don't even know that either. You know what I mean? Like, uh, for example, no, that's not true. No, no, I know, but I'm saying they don't even know the hadith <laughs> yeah. uh, of yeah. that. So some of them don't even go to that extent. Even they just think you can not. Uh, it's just like any other prayer they can miss. Stuck for Allah. Yeah, like like that, and and it's uh, you know. Or shaking hands with the female, for example. Oh, it's not a bit like, you know, oh, I shouldn't, but, the, I mean, you know, the same people are probably still doing more than that. But that's that's kind of what, what I'm saying. Like, I think there's also that limit, uh, sorry, that barrier of knowledge as well. Um, you you got to be the temptations. And look, to the, young, to the young audience, don't listen to that song that everyone's talking about. Mm. Don't watch that video that everyone's telling you to watch. Don't talk to that girl that everyone's telling you to talk to. Okay, even if that everyone is the don't shaitan. don't grab yeah don't go to that party that all the boys and girls are gonna attend. Don't drink that drink. Don't eat that food. Don't yeah, that go to that restaurant. Party and yeah. Sure, yeah, don't you know shake or hug that girl or hug that boy. Just don't do it. The temptation is there. We are not denying that. Okay, that is this that is the test of of our lives. The temptations will always be there, and shaitan will do his best to put forward in front of you. More and more temptations, but if you overcome these temptations, <laughs> Allah will bless your path. The mm. same way Yusuf alayhi salam was tempted with the uh, beautiful uh, woman of high status and wealth and so on and so forth, and he refused the temptation. At the end, what what did he gain? He became the governor, one of the governors, or like a yeah, or, minister, or yeah, minister, minister of Egypt. Mm. He had the money, he had the acclaim, he had the status. And because what he actually overcame and refused that temptation, that and whether the t- the blessing sorry Adnan to cut you off, yeah, whether it. the blessing is in this life, which is the the way, let's say the lesser the lesser reward, the, the the blessing will definitely come in the next life, and that is where you want it most definitely. Isn't mm-hmm. that like the hadith of the Prophet where they said so so people that. later will get fifty th- the rewards of what the companions got because of the amount of temptations and. Every literally every step we do, there's like a halal or haram decision that's got to be made. You know. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Not easy. It's driving the car. Oof. 
That's what I mean. Like everything. <laughs> do I beep him? Do I shoot him? Do I <laughs> that? You got that. You got the music playing <clears throat> in the stereo. You got people walking on a, on the streets on our side. You yeah. got thousands of things happening. And and I think if we go back to the reason that we like we do this podcast, that is we're young and we've gone through it. We ha- it's not we are still going through it and we have gone through it. So for anyone that's like for any younger or, or people around our age or even older but that are going through stuff like this just knowing that we've done it we go through it like it is possible if you're doubting or oh, i can't get that job or it's going to backlash i'm going to get backlash and backfire on me whatever it may i'm not saying it won't but it is like there is that possibility like you can sack that party or that christmas event or whatever it is and still be successful in, in yeah. whatever it is that you're doing look and if the wise man doesn't make the same mistakes twice. as his father or as you know yeah. as twice so you whoever may be listening myself you boys okay no one is in this journey alone no one that's why islam emphasized so much on the community on brotherhood on family ties you go through these temptations these crossroads in your life with people there to support you and no matter how down and out you might think, <coughs> there's always going to be someone there to support you. You just need to reach out to the right people. Heck, call El Bayan. Mm. Message El Bayan on Facebook. Go to your local That's masjid. True. Just speak to the random brother you're praying next to. The one that your shoulder is touching and your ankles are touching and your feet are lined up together and you're doing the exact same actions and you're reading the exact same words. Ask that person for help. If they can't help you, maybe they'll re- they'll f- they'll put you yeah. in touch with someone Just that tell can. Them, this is the situation I'm going through. What do you reckon? Do you have advice? That's them? it. Yeah. You you might need to ask ten people before you get the answer that's suited to you. Mm. Not everyone's gonna have the right answer, but these temptations you do not need to go through them and these challenges of life on your own. Yeah. One main point as well with the temptations that you realize is that the main f- oh, one of the topics of the the chapter was that. The person doing that temptation will always wish to drag uh, you down to make themselves feel better and less guilty. Mm. So it gives you the the saying, that adulterous wishes that all women are, were adulteresses. Or I'm sure everyone has it. Like the person that doesn't smoke and everyone's trying to force him to have a cigarette so they feel less guilty, you know. Mm. Or they're drinking and the same thing. Ah, oh, drink, drink. Because in, their rea- in reality, they're the ones that are feeling guilty. If, if the good boy does it, they will feel less bad, you know. Yeah. So try or to... Praying, if you're them. praying and they're not praying, they feel guilty. Yeah. Mm. If you don't pray, they're going to be like, oh, I'm mad. Yeah. I don't need to pray as well either. If the good boy d- is not going to pray, then like, why do mm. I need to pray? Mm. Yeah. So, and, uh, so the word, a word that the sheikh says at the end of the chapter about temptations, he says, um, methodology. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not obey those who reject the truth. They wish that you compromise so they can they too can compromise, which is essentially what we... Well, and then just said, yeah, makes them feel better about. and allows them to do yeah. what they want to do. And, and so that, that kind of uh, wraps up the temptation and the three chapters that we went through today. Man, I'm glad we did this. Voila, I feel good. Yeah. You know what? That because was I was, before this, you guys saw in the chat, I was, I was half-hearted. I was, uh, I was half-hearted and so I'm like, man, uh, we really got to finish this book. So uh, that way I haven't like left the commitment yeah, yeah. unfinished. Half done. But like, it was good. One, it's good for us. Inshallah, yeah, yeah, may Allah wanna. benefit us. You know, mm-hmm. and our families, and also the the listeners, if there's any, even if there isn't, we inshallah no, we benefit. Of people commenting on YouTube. Inshallah we benefit. Um, my little last advice is everyone go sleep early so you can wake up, pray Fajr at the mosque, and inshallah. make the most of this Ramadan. Wallah, I fell into the trap of sleeping late, getting carried away, and it's so hard to wake up after Fajr for support everything. That's it. Mm-hmm. Don't fall into that trap. We'll be back next week, inshallah. Yes. Inshallah. This program was presented by Al Bayan Radio, the voice of Ahlus Sunnah wal Jama'ah.